Greetings, viewers, and thanks for joining me as I tear the dash apart in the Tacoma to begin the wire swap process. Now, I already had some of this apart. I placed a few things back up in there just so I could give you an idea what to take out. First thing to remove is this bottom panel. There are 10 millimeters in all the big holes and screws in the smaller holes. You can undo your hood latch by slipping it out of that little notch there and then pulling it out sideways. Yeah, there it is, the opening in the top there. And get your cable out. Then you can take this piece and put it in the back where it won't be in the way of your wires and your Hello Kitty steering wheel cover. There are just a couple screws and some push fittings in this piece here. Again, I already had it out, so I didn't put it back. You have to take this out first. You pull that cover off with your pick, the little cover with your colors and your indicators on it. And then it just, uh, you pull all the little knobs straight off with your fingers. I've, I've done this before. It's similar to the dash video I did for the third gen. But anyway, there's a screw here, which is broken. I didn't break it. It was already broken. I'm guessing radio installer person broke that. <clears throat> Excuse me, but there is a screw there that has to come out. The rest of this is just held in with push clips. That's pretty nice. This piece would come out next after that. It's the piece that goes around your key cylinder and such. Unplug the clock from the back of it. You'll have to unplug your emergency flashers too. This piece, like I said, held on with a couple of screws. You can, if you take this part off, it's a little easier, but you can still get it out of there without taking that off. You just got to fuss it with it a little bit. Don't forget to unplug your ECT switch, transmission switch, and your dash lights. That'll come out with that little piece of the ductwork on it there as well. Phillips screwdriver and a 10 millimeter will get you everything so far in this. There are four screws down there, up there, and over here to get this cluster out. When you pull the cluster out, there are three flat plugs in the back. They pull out plenty and let you undo that. The speedometer cable has a little push clip on it. Can you see that? Yeah, just a little push clip on it so you can get it out. That's the hardest part about getting this cluster out. Now, I should not be needing this cluster to go back in, but I'm not going to discard it just yet. There is, There are uh, bolts back there on both sides of this, where the Forerunner only had one. Those will need to come out. Ductwork will need to come unscrewed right there. I'll get to some of that here in a minute and move along with this. It is put in with clips across the top. Well, let's just go ahead and undo them right now. There's that one. I'm gonna keep setting in front of my light here because I got my crappy LED light that I already bought, and I don't like it. But anyway, so I'll take that one and this one, throw them on the floor with all the rest of the screws and such. I like to take this loose from the dash portion. I should probably show you what I'm doing here. That is a little screw holding your ductwork in. I keep all my screws on the floor in one pile here. That way it'll be easy to keep track of when it's time to put it all back together. You can see where those push in to clips along the dash base. 
So this part's about ready to go. I'm going to jump over to the other side and show you that. As a side note, I said, <clears throat> excuse me, just undo this top nut and this antenna had come apart. I guess I was so excited about how all the rest of the bolts came out. I thought that was going to work. It didn't. I can't remove this fender completely because even though I've unbolted the antenna from down there, the wire's still running under the glove box. And I wanted to undo it correctly by removing the rest of the dash. I have to remove the rest of the dash anyway. See, here's that piece I was talking about pulling off and pulling those off. There's two screws under the bottom of the glove box. Right here. And right here. Same. Come on. It's dark in there. All right, so that's those screws. Glove box just comes right out. Goes in the back with everything else. Cool, looks like I got some books and stuff in there. You're gonna end up having to take the same bunch of stuff out to get the computer and all. This piece here is designed to squeeze together and ah, this pull out. I'll, uh, I'll get back to that. <laughs> that one's fighting me. This piece down here has to be removed. There is a fastener up underneath, maybe. No, it's just held on by clips, too. Let me grab that out of there. That just has the one clip in the middle. And two little holes there that some push clips will go in if they didn't all break when you tried to take them out. Those would need to come out. I've got next, looks like a 10 in this corner. Got to remove this black plastic piece above the glove box. That's some more 10. Ooh, a screw there. Okay. Well, that's three tens on a third gen. It's a screw here. No problemo. Let's get that down. Is there anything else holding this? That little brace that holds the pieces together. I bet we got something here behind that ashtray. Maybe, uh, yeah, okay, around the radio, those are eight millimeters. Okay, so those four eight millimeters for the radio, once you get those out, that frees up a bunch of this. Still got to take this control box out. That's three screws. Wasn't anything behind the uh, ashtray I just thought there was so once I get that bottom piece out I'll put the ashtray back so I don't lose it I guess I can do it now one that, ooh, pretty clean okay now the airbag I still got to get this black plastic piece out of here and the airbag loose. Let me see. Oh, that's all part. Oh, this part is. This is not. I gotta take that screw out. Okay. Okay, that is stuck on there. I'm going to take the other side of it out, too. Easy enough to put back in when the time comes. Now this should come apart here. This piece. Ah, there's the other fastener hidden up underneath there. 
I knew there had to be one. And it's a screw in this case. Okay, so there's one hidden up in there behind that latch. That hunk of wiring right there, same thing that came off of the glove box in the other vehicle. I'm going to undo that screw right there and remove that. Now this bottom piece here fits in with a push fit clip right there and another one right here. So you just kind of pull that out. You got to unplug your lighter and your light to your lighter. Yeah, this one's not a power port. It's still got a lighter in it. So that little piece comes out. This is quite a bit different than the third gen, yet still similar in a uh, several ways. So now, let's see here. <clears throat> oh, there is no passenger airbag on this one. That screw released that. This part of the ductwork comes out. That's why that one wouldn't smush. Hang on. Let me see if I can get this to come out of here now. Oh, no, this one will sit somewhere. Oops, oops. There we go. That thing folds up pretty nice. All right. So, I think it must be ready to come out amongst the clips across the top of the dash now. So, that all looks pretty free. All of it's undone. Oop. That's okay. All right, now I'm going to go to the other side. Okay, I kind of hope that you can see what's happening there. And this is moving, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, once I got it loose from the studs where those nuts were there, and loose against from the windshield over there. It is just some more clips against the windshield. Push all your wires back in. To call them all the way down. Hopefully I don't have to take that column stuff off. We'll go to the other side real quick. Hey, when it's not caught on the door. Looks like it comes off a lot easier. All right, so that is it. And out it comes. Hey, that wasn't bad at all. Hang on, let me put this over here. Okay, well I hope you could see that part. It wasn't that bad once you get those fasteners out. Hope you could see all the fasteners from a little point of view thing I'm doing here. Go along next, just like I did on the donor car. Start unplugging things. This will all unplug and go out. You know how it went. <laughs> I'll uh, move around and undo all of the fasteners. Unplug every clip. Take all this stuff out so I can get all my wires. Then I'm going to do some comparison for plugs and switches, etc. I don't think I want to, um, well, I don't know. I guess maybe I could compare some of the switches to the harness in the back there just to make sure they plug in. It looks surprisingly similar, or maybe that's not surprising since it's such a similar vehicle. A lot of the wire colors, I've already kind of done some sneak peek and they look the same. Next, I'm going to pull these uh, loose. They just push fit on with the little clips right here on the end. And you should have to undo that right there to get them out. But um, I'll take that screw out and get up in there to get to the rest of my wires. I should have probably done that to begin with. But usually I'm so used to having those out in such a way that they're not locked in because see they lock in right there but that's easy enough to take out gonna go do that on the other side 
take a look at some of the fasteners. Just so I'll know, I'll be back to clue you in on that part when it comes time to actually start swapping this harness around. See what all challenges I'm going to come up with. That is basically how you get the dash apart. Hope that made sense to everybody. It's pretty easy. Uh, there's just a lot of fasteners, so take your time and look. And if you pull and it won't go, see why and take out that fastener because you missed one. I do it all the time. So I'm going to just wrap that up there and do this in some little segments because when I come to do the wires again, I'm going to try and do some of the comparo and uh, comparison and show you what you need to look for. I'm excited about moving forward with this project. I can't wait to get the motor in and get it hooked up and see it come to life. But this is all part of what needs to be done. So if you didn't know how to do that, you do now, I think. <laughs> I haven't watched the video. But yeah, it's not, it's not all that tough. It's not rocket surgery, that's for sure. I appreciate you checking it out, though, and seeing what I got going. Now I can pull that antenna wire through and get this fender off, start doing my wires as I go around. was talking about the woo, air conditioning on the motor over here. All this is different than what came off of the third gen, and it's currently sealed and works, and the compressor appears to bolt on in the same fashion. So I'm going to try and not open the air conditioner system on this. I know that's jumping way ahead, but it's something else I thought of. So if you're doing yours, and you might want to think about not draining your AC and trying to save it all, I think that shouldn't be too bad. I don't know. That's what we're here to find out. <laughs> so I appreciate you tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Like and subscribe if you liked the show and want to see more. Please, it's free, it's painless, and it's easy. And hopefully my tender will be back soon. Going to get my trailer tomorrow, so I'll have some fun uh, trailer to show. But that's not what I'm here to talk about right now. I appreciate you. Check links if you want to do that stuff. Yeah, have a great day. <laughs>